Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Well, due to the popularity of the Joe Kender episode on Chris Watts, and also somebody else recently asking, you know, has Joe Kender spoken about the John Bonet Ramsey case? Uh, I looked into it and he did say something in June 2017. He answered a question that everyone has been asking about the John Bonet Ramsey case. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed, please do like, share, leave a comment, and let's get started. I know a question I've been asking is what if Joe Kender had been recruited into the John Bonet Ramsey case instead of Lou Smith, or as well as Lou Smith? What would have happened? Would you have this epic battle between two? legendary detectives and very interestingly both Kender and Smith come from the same police department Colorado Springs. Kender is about 11 years younger than Smith was. Uh, Kender's born in um, August 28th the same month as John Bonet's birthday 1946 and Lou Smith was born in 1935. Lou Smith retired in 1996. And interestingly, so did Kender. Kender also resigned September 1st, 1996. I'm going to play an audio clip from Detective Lieutenant Joe Kender in a moment. But first, I want to just provide a little bit of backstory. He also had a closure rate of 92%. He solved 356 cases. Uh, there were a total of um, 387 homicide cases over his 23 year career he solved 356 of them and obviously we know him from the investigation discovery series in the article from 2017 it's quite interesting that they say not a week goes by when Joe Kender isn't asked his opinion on the John Bonet Ramsey case and when he, when they reached out to him, when Discovery reached out to him for his insights on the Ramsey investigation, this is what he said. I understand there is supposedly new evidence in the Ramsey case. The reality of the Ramsey case is this. Any murder is a spinning top on a table. It is perfectly balanced. You should study it with your hands in your pockets. If you touch it in the wrong place, it goes off the table and you never get it back. The Ramsey case went off the table 20 years ago, and you're not going to get it back. So that was Kendrick's position on the 20-year anniversary of the John Bonet case. It, it was uh, something he said in September 2016. But in 2017, he elaborated a little bit on that on June the 20th, and this is what he said. He said, I just retired from the CSPD, that's Colorado Springs Police Department, when this crime occurred in Boulder, Colorado. I was approached and consulted with well after the event by the Boulder Police Department, so I'm quite familiar with the facts not known to the public. In my opinion, gross deficiencies occurred during the initial stages of this investigation by the Boulder Police Department. These deficiencies were so great they produced fatal errors and preclude any possibility of this matter ever being presented in court. Murder cases are like a spinning top on a table. One should admire it first and study it carefully before proceeding. Touch it too soon and it goes off the table and you never get it back. That little girl remains in her grave and no one will pay for it. Now, I'm the first person to say I think Joe Kend is awesome. I think he's an incredible detective, great attention to detail. You know, his track record speaks for itself. He's also a little bit of a showman in the sense that he knows how to, he's kind of got the gift of the gab, I guess. And um, But I've got to just be honest and authentic, I guess, and just say I find his position on this, a little bit of a letdown. I feel a little bit disappointed uh, in his position. What would be very interesting is if Joe Kender did a investigation like Lou Smith did, just 
hypothetically, just looking at the evidence and saying, okay, this is what I think about it. I've got an idea, and I hope I'm wrong, but I've got an idea that Kender's position might actually be the same as Lou Smith's, to be honest. And I'll tell you why. It's because he seems to blame the Boulder Police Department, which is almost the mainstream position today, which is, so what went wrong with the, what, what went wrong with the Rams investigation? The police botched the case. Uh, why has there not been justice in John Bernay Ramsey case? It's all because of the Boulder Police Department. I don't believe that. I'm not saying the Boulder Police didn't make mistakes, but police make mistakes in many cases. And um, this is my position, basically, is the case did actually go to court. There was a grand jury investigation which uh, lasted 13 months. And if the grand jury were unable to reach a conclusion, then I would agree and say, wow, okay, so it's really pointless taking this case any further. But they didn't. The grand jury did make a decision. They asserted the, um, the, themselves on the evidence and they voted and they voted in terms of indictments. And the, the failure in the Ramsey case doesn't come from the Boulder police side. The failure comes from the district attorney side. Now, that's not to say there weren't f failures from the Boulder police side. And, you know, you can definitely um, make that case. But I feel like that drum has been banged into a sort of a drum that no longer works. It's been banged so much. And it's basically, you know, you can make the, the, the claim that um, because, you know, the only homicide in 1996 was the murder of John Bernay. So you didn't really have homicide detectives in Boulder, right? So the, the, the detectives and the cops assigned to the case were actually um, kind of in other areas like armed robbery and... Um, dealing with drugs and that sort of thing. But that's not to say that they absolutely had no idea what they were doing, right? And, you know, you can talk about contamination all day, but something like the ransom note, that, that wasn't contaminated. The ransom note stands as a singular piece of evidence. And, you know, it's very interesting that there's so much confusion about the ransom note when there shouldn't be. On a question like who authored the ransom note, it should be quite clear. Was there a kidnapping? It should be quite clear. Was there an intruder? The answer should also be quite clear. In that area, I must say, you could potentially have solved the, the Ramsey case. I don't really mean solved it to the point of absolute certainty, but you could have excluded the intruder theory entirely if the um, police photographer and also if the first officer on scene had made absolutely sure about the snow around the house and had also just observed it very carefully but also communicated it very um, uh, obviously in the beginning and that would then have um, forced everybody to reach a particular conclusion and not muck about as they did. If we take Kendra's position, we say, okay, he's right. This is all the fault of the Boulder Police Department. Let's give the case to another police department and let them solve it. Let, right? And so I think a, a really good mind experiment in this case is to say, okay, let's imagine that the John Bonnet Ramsey case happened let's say 20 years later or more and it was in the hands of an excellent um, uh, uh, law enforcement staff let's put it that way you know that had great resources and that that could be on the ball right let's also just bear in mind that when the, when patsy called 911 the, the officer first officer was on scene literally within minutes literally i think he called at um, she called at 50, uh, 552 and the officer, first officer on scene was there uh, in about five to seven minutes. He was there before 6 a.m. 
also there was an officer who arrived at the scene um, on December 23rd due to a drop 911 call. That doesn't happen every day either, where somebody doesn't actually call 911 or they call 911 and don't. And you actually had an officer arriving on the scene. So th you, you can also talk about the, the, the good police work that was going on. But what I want to just mention very quickly is, can you imagine if the John Monet Ramsey case took place in Frederick, Colorado, in um, Saratoga Trail, that uh, instead of 7, um, 755 15th Street that had happened in 2825 Saratoga Trail, that, it, that the Chris Watts home was the Ramsey home, um, something like that, and you had those police, Officer Kunra, Detective Bormover, all these people coming onto the scene and, and so on. And so this is what I want to uh, kind of emphasize is you had cadaver dogs in the um, Chris Watts case who arrived the very next day, right? You didn't have cadaver dogs in the John Bonet Ramsey case, but you didn't need them the next day because they found John Bonet a couple of hours later. The idea of bringing dogs in the house was there. It was simply not acted upon. But bear in mind, the police were misled to believe that it was a kidnapping. And by very well-to-do people, very well-respected people in the community. The other thing is if you want to compare apples with apples, if you look at the Chris Watts case, you had all of these officers with body cams and, you know, in the Chris Watts case, what happened? You had um, the officer arriving at the scene. Chris Watts wasn't there at the time. When Chris Watts opened the door, you had exactly the same situation as the Ramsey case where you had people trampling the scene. You had um, Nicole Atkinson entering the premises. Her son entered the premises. Even her daughter entered the premises, right? You had her son finding the cell phone. And if this case had gone to trial, Chris Watts' defense would have had a field day arguing that certain evidence couldn't, wasn't reliable because the crime scene wasn't contained, right? Then you had a whole bunch of other police officers in the scene. And personally, I find the cadaver dog um, episode quite frustrating because it's neither here nor then. And in this case, we know three people died. And we can be quite sure that at least one person died in the house. And yet the cadaver dogs didn't seem to, I won't say didn't do their job, but for whatever reason, there, there wasn't absolutely clear evidence from that. So yeah, you have a case in 2018 with all of this excellent technology. And did the can you say that the Frederick Police Department didn't make any mistakes? And obviously that case has been put to bed in record time. Chris Watts is sitting in jail and all of that. But a lot of that is because of Chris Watts, because he took a plea deal. Had that case gone to trial, it would have been quite difficult to prosecute in a way because, first of all, there was very little evidence that they found um, there was a lot of circumstantial evidence, especially in the phone records, but there was very little um, evidence, forensic evidence found on the scene. And you could definitely argue contamination because there were something like three officers inside the home on the first day and, and then the detective as well. And then there were other people walking through the house. Um, Nicole Atkinson, her son and her daughter. And then you also had Nathaniel Trinastich. I'm not sure if he entered the house, but he was certainly hanging around the garage area. And you could say, well, you know, if you weren't looking, it's possible that Nathaniel also went in the house or went into the garage. Uh, would, you, would you have known one way or the other? I'm not saying that he did. I'm just saying a d the defense could argue that. So what I'm saying is, you know, it's a typical defense tactic in almost every high profile trial to blame law enforcement, to blame the prosecutor for whatever. And that's why I'm a little bit dismayed that Kenda is doing the same thing here. 
And I don't think he's right. I think, you know, there are deficiencies in all um, crimes, as I've said, in all investigations. And he talks about them in his series as well. To me, the absolute deficiency in this case and the absolutely obvious deficiency in this case is the grand jury voting to indict and the stubborn district attorney failing, first of all, to disclose that fact and secondly, to allow the case to go to trial. And what is wrong with that? What is wrong with the case going to trial and the district attorney losing the case? What's wrong with that? Allow the case to go to trial, allow the evidence to be heard, rather than for this cloud to be hanging over Boulder, the, the cloud to be hanging over the Ramses. Allow it to go through its due process. Allow all of those resources that went into investigating, all the money spent, all the hours spent, all the dedication of the detectives, allow it to come to fruition. And instead what has happened is someone kind of created a dead end for this case. And by constantly blaming the Boulder police, that dead end persists. And that is because of the um, district attorney's office, the prosecutors, and the chummy legal system that was going on in Boulder. The Boulder police were effectively battling an army of lawyers, public relations people, and the suspects themselves, Team Ramsey, which have now become, well now officially the suspects are just somebody else question mark if you want to criticize some of the police work that went into the ramsey case you can you can do that but if you take someone like detective steve thomas he i don't think he was correct in thinking that patsy was responsible but i think he was correct in some of a lot of his assumptions and i think he was correct in seeing something in what he was seeing right and not only did he do i think he did quite a good job even though he wasn't a homicide detective he had a lot of experience in crime and i think his book speaks volumes about his attention to detail and the way that he thought about this case and that's something else just to acknowledge i think is that this the ramsey case is quite a difficult case there are uh, forces at work in the Ramsey case with very powerful attorneys and very powerful PR and a counter narrative that has been carefully curated, that has been put out into the media. And there's all of that that you've got to deal with, right? It's, it's, so for any police department in that scenario, especially with the lawyers um, holding the sword of Damocles over their heads, it was going to be a tough assignment, do you agree? And so while I disagree with uh, Steve Thomas's position, I certainly respect him as a great asset in the case. And I, I, I prefer him to Lou Smith. I think he contributed far more to the case than what Lou Smith dis de detracted from it. And then there's also uh, Detective Kola. And again, I think Kola is a great detective and good attention to detail and he also wrote a book and it's um, a different book to Steve Thomas's but also full of insights and, and very fascinating. Once again I don't fully agree with Kola's um, position but I think it's closer to uh, what what is likely the situation than Steve Thomas's book but to put together, Steve Thomas and Kohler's book are um, giving you, sketching you this incredible insight into the Ramsey case. Not only that, but an insight into what what it was like to be the Boulder Police Department, where you can't speak to certain witnesses like Melody Stanton. That just doesn't make any sense. Where you've got your own district attorney apologizing to your suspects and exonerating them based on, you know, in terms of the DNA evidence, we're still going to talk about that based on DNA evidence that's not conclusive at all. And we're, gonna, we're still going to get to the DNA myth. So while I respect uh, Detective Kender, and I would love him to really, you know, he was apparently handed the case file. So it would be amazing if he could talk about the case. I don't know whether he's not allowed to, but, uh, you know, you had 
Lou Smith talking about it. Maybe he's afraid of wading into the Ramsey minefield because let's face it, so many people have faced lawsuits over the years. I think the last thing to mention is that I think it's a great metaphor to talk about this spinning top on the table and that you should admire it and study it. But if you touch it, it goes off the table and you never get it back. I don't I don't think I agree with that. I don't think I agree with that in terms of true crime is it's, uh, you know, there was another lawyer, I think it was Shapiro, who, who said, you know, what's your advice to give a client? Always tell the truth. If you if you tell one lie, you can lose the case. I remember respecting that incredibly in the, in my early days in true crime, only to find you get people who go onto the stand who, who lie the entire time. You You get people who make witness statements that are, for the most part, untrue. You've got uh, suspects like Casey Anthony and Chris Watts and so on. And um, I don't know whether what Shapira said is true at all anymore. Um, and so when Candace says something about the spinning top on a table, and if you make one false move as a police officer, you can lose the entire case. Um, I don't believe that at all. I think there are many cases, it's very difficult where you are misled to believe that something's a kidnapping or an abduction or someone's missing when they're actually dead. Uh, it's very easy to be ensnared in that, in that ruse and then not make some kind of mistake based on being misled. You have that in the Madeleine McCann case, you have that in the Ramsey case, you have that in the Chris Watts case. And if you want these cases to be solved, I think you can start off by not firing the detectives, the lead detectives that are in charge of them, as happened in the Madeleine McCann case. And, you know, in terms of the uh, Ramsey case, both lead detectives resigned. Thank you for listening. I'll be putting up episode 41 in the ongoing series of 50 episodes uh, quite soon on this channel. So look out for that. Again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment and I'll see you guys next time.